willkommen zurück zum nächsten Panel hier auf der Hauptbühne der Austria Comic Con 2022. Und ich habe mir lang überlegt, mit welchem tollen Wikinger-Schrei ich dieses Panel eröffne. Und dann habe ich mir überlegt, ich könnte mich auch einfach nicht zum Affen machen und das Leuten überlassen, die es wirklich können. Eine davon ist glücklicherweise bei uns. Ladies and Gentlemen, Georgia Hurst! Hello, please. Take a seat. Where shall I sit? Here? Wherever you want. Okay, this is a good spot. Hey, guys. So, I want to look at the audience for the first uh, few seconds because I'm looking at faces who want to hear Vikings questions and I want to see how they react when I tell them I'm not going to be asking Vikings questions for now. If you want Vikings questions, there is a mic in the middle of um, the dais. You can. Just walk up to the mic, and whenever there is someone standing near the mic, it's your turn, it's your word. You can ask as many questions as you want, as long as you're done in half an hour. And I'm feeling generous. I might just answer all the juicy, gossipy questions. I'm in the mood today, so ask anything. So, I will start by asking anything, because there's a... I mean, I have some good and some bad news. Um, there is a possibility to date you, But the bad news is it's only online in a computer game. You made a very interesting project uh, together with Paul Rashid, who made an amazing game called The Complex, which I very much enjoyed. And in 2020, there was an experimental FMV game that was completely filmed and made during the pandemic. So what can you tell us about the, the process. I, I read that uh, Rashid sent you all the equipment that you needed, all the clothes you needed to wear, but he was still the director. Was he on camera when you recorded this? Did you have uh, like FaceTime chats uh, together? How did this project come together? Yeah, so it was like in the middle of lockdown where I was extremely surprised to have like a job offer in my emails and I was like how is this going to work it's the middle of lockdown and as you say he um, provided us with all the equipment so the costume the camera the microphone everything um, I had to just pretend I was on set with other people when it was just me and it was like we were effectively on a program that was like zoom so he was on the other end and I had a little earpiece so he could direct me during the scene and I would basically zoom um, the other actor so he would be there as well um, and he would just be directing us along the way basically so it was really surreal but I was grateful just that we you know could work in lockdown and that I could still be kind of flexing my creative muscles um, And yeah, it was a really good experience, but very, very odd. Uh, I have played the game, but I can't, I cannot watch myself back. So I just haven't been able to really watch it. Um, it the, of course, we all know when you shoot movies or TV shows, there's always multiple takes of the same situation. But for um, five dates, I heard that you shot over 700 different takes and scenes. How did you and they all keep up with the, the amount of footage that was recorded? Um, it's quite a funny story. I remember like three days before we started filming, um, I did a little rehearsal and I said to the director, Paul, um, I know all my words, I've learned everything, I'm off book, uh, so we're all good to go. And he was like, okay, perfect. And he was like, I just want, to, want your opinion on this particular scene. And I said, like, oh, I've never heard of that scene. And then I realized I scrolled down and I had about 10 different scripts because they were all the possible endings. And I had no idea. I'd only learned one. So um, I then had to go back in like three days and learn like another seven scripts. And just from practice, I think from Vikings, I have a photographic memory. So I can mentally like take a picture of a page and remember the words, which is just weird, but it's just from doing the show, Vikings, I think. So I kind of, we all kept on top of it amazingly. Obviously it was confusing. Um, and I think the last few days, the, I had so many lines that my head was just jumbled. <laughs> but the lead guy, um, he must have had, he was going on dates with like six, five girls. So um, 
he must have had so much dialogue. But yeah, I got away kind of lightly, but it was hard. But you ha we had to be strict about it uh, and regimented. Because uh, other than with a regular movie that's like streamlined, you go one direction from the beginning to the end, the user can create his own experience in this type of FMV games. He makes selections and the characters on screen react accordingly. So the question for me is, you have your scripts, um, but how much are you then involved in this decision-making process that the player goes through while you record your own footage? Um, we really don't have any control. I think with the difference is when you do a show like Vikings or um, a movie, you know, you, ha you know who your character is. You get a sense of their development. You might do scenes and you just think, you know, Torvi wouldn't have done that, or my character just wouldn't do that. It doesn't make sense. Whereas in a project like this, um, there's several different endings, and it's not like you can say, oh, she wouldn't do that, because she might, because there's 10 yeah. different endings. So really, it was very, like, strict to the script. There was really no, like, wiggle room. It was like the script was written as it was, and there was really no, like, deviating from that. So not a lot of, like, fun creatively in terms of being able to, like, express yourself. Um, just like follow the script basically word for word. What, what I personally find difficult to imagine how this works is when you create a character, like for a TV show, you have one path that this character takes. Maybe the path is given to you by the script writers, by the directors, or you have your own influence. But with the FMV game, your character can change so much because of the decisions of the player that you're basically playing like seven different characters in one character. How do you keep up with this in, in your head and it doesn't explode? Well, I think, you know, she is the same character. So despite having lots of kind of possible different endings, um, it's, it's made less confusing by the fact that it's, it's just dating. So she either likes the guy, she doesn't like the guy. So it's easy to keep your sort of character, um, the character traits and what you, what you kind of have built around the character and what you imagine the character would say and do. Um, you know, the, sli the slightly different endings didn't, I didn't feel like messed with my head too much because I knew who she was and I was like, okay, she can still be like this, but actually she can start falling for him or she can still be this tough lawyer, but actually she can decide she doesn't want to date him. So I was able to kind of try and keep that character the same, but explore like the different options. But yeah, you're right. It's like, you know, I got to play all of these different possible endings, which means that the character was like completely different in every kind of version. Have you played the game yourself? No, I just can't watch myself. No, I tried for a second and no, I don't want to date myself. So what can I say? I hear this so often that, that actors have a problem watching themselves. I, I would find it fascinating to see how it would have turned out when you, as the player, make certain selection and how this transfers uh, to, to the screen and to the scene. So, but you also didn't wa uh, watch the other scenes that the other actors for the, the other dates no. made? No. You're not, not, a, good ga uh, not a big gamer. Um, I, I think I clicked on it and did a, selected a couple of options, but I honestly just could not bear to date myself. I just, it was just too much. Um, <laughs> okay, that, yeah, that thought is a I already creepy. have to live yeah. with myself, let alone date myself. It'd just be too much. Um, but no, but I mean, I heard that everyone else did a great job and there were some really cool actors on that project, to be honest. Um, but I feel the same with Vikings. I, I tend not to watch that really either. Wow. Um, one last thing about the FMV uh, things, because um, Rashid and you have another project in the pipeline, and it's not out yet. So I haven't found much info on it. I only know it's called Death Trap Dungeon, The Golden Room, which is an amazing title. Um, what can you tell us about this project? What kind of choices do we make? What kind of characters are we going to see? Is it more horror, mystery, puzzle-solving experience? or? So I actually remember that I think it is out. I'll have to get your email and I'll email it to you. So from what I understand, it is on Xbox and 
PlayStation, I think, but it's very difficult to find. Okay. Um, or it's not been released on there, but it's on a streaming website. It might not have been released actually yet on PlayStation, but they're planning to release it. But I'll, I'll try and send it to you. Um, and I'll put it on my Instagram in case any of you guys are interested. But it is a, um, a physical game. So my character is a northerner who basically comes along lots of trials and tribulations. Um, and eventually, I think the dream is that they want to make it into a proper video game. I hope that they use me if they make it into a proper video game. Um, so it was a kind of tester, and it was one of the most um, kind of advanced um, visual effects that they have. Uh, so everything from the screen. So it, when you do green screen, you normally have the green screen behind you, and in post, you project um, the image that you want onto mm -hmm. the green screen. And this actually, the image is already in the camera lens. So it's blue screen, and as the director looks through the lens, they can see what it's going to look like in the end product, which was like crazy. Um, so yeah, very physical, very cool character, and um, I hope they make a proper um, game of it because. That was a, such a fun character to play. <laughs> Since you've worked with, with Ratchet twice now uh, on the FMV games, but the, the experiences must have been completely different because I think for Death Threat Dungeon, um, you were together. It wasn't an online production. So how does that affect the experience of working on the project if you're actually in the same room? I know it's kind of a dark question, but... Yeah, I think just to be able to work with um, you know, producers or directors or other actors in person, obviously you bounce off their energy and um, you know, it is kind of nice. Me and Paul obviously already had our other project together we'd met in person, so it meant that when, um, when we did the virtual um, show together, we had that rapport. Um, but I would have liked to work with um, Tahin who played you know, the love interest in five dates. I would love to have met him in person and been able to kind of improvise. And, but I'm quite specific when I'm acting. I don't love a lot of director input, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but I prefer a director that gives me a bit of advice but leaves me to it, which is what Paul's like. Um, I just, a really over-involved director is just the worst thing for me personally. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually something that, I, that I'm always interested in when I talk to actors um, because there are so many different positions to fill when you are making a project, be it a TV show, movie, or FMV game. Is there anything other than being an actress in front of the camera that you would really love to do at one point? Be it directing, writing, making the soundtrack? Oh, I wish I could say yes. I wish that I had like a writing bug or that I had any, you know, passions. But really, the, I'm only, if I have to put it brutally, I don't know how I'm going to feel when I'm older. But as it stands, I'm really only interested in, you know, the craft of acting. I just nothing else appeals to me. I think if it wasn't for acting, I probably wouldn't have been in the industry in the first place because it is a really tough industry to be in. And the older I get, the more sensitive I am. So, you know, when I was young, I was like fearless and took everything on the chin. And I think as you get older and you're, you know, you start to, things start to upset you more that people say. And, um, and I think if it wasn't for my absolute like love of acting, I, I don't know that I would necessarily be in the business in the first place, to be honest. That was actually the perfect leading for my next question, because h how did you become an actress? When did you find out that this was something you really wanted to do? And how did you start? Influences and something. Yeah, so I mean, ev I feel like everyone says this. Like when I was a kid, I was so funny. Like I made everyone laugh, um, but I, I I think I did. Um, my family always saw something in me. Um, but I just thought I was the funny one uh, and, you know, make, just make everyone laugh. But I never, ever would have wanted to act um, or just thought it was a possibility. So I got into university to be a teacher. And that's what I would have done. I would have been really happy doing that. And I think I was doing my A-level drama production. And my parents, my dad is obviously a writer and is very busy so never used to come to any of my like school things and he attended my drama performance at the end of school and afterwards he was like 
wow, you're actually not bad. And I was like, thank you. Um, and he was like, I think you should audition for Vikings. Um, a really small role, like an extra role, but you maybe put your university on hold for a year and see if you like it and then maybe change your degree to an acting degree or something, you know. So it was only ever meant to be just to see if I liked acting. I, it was never meant to turn into the Torvi that we all know and love, hopefully. So, that, so I auditioned for the, for the role um, and I got it. And as we all know, if you guys have watched it, Torvi starts, you know, in the first two seasons, just a couple of words here and there. Um, and somehow the production, MGM and History, just really loved the rapport that me and Lagatha, I don't, I'm not sure how much that was written in, that me and Lagatha were meant to become so close. But because when you have so little lines, you have to sort of build your own storyline in the background. So I would start, if I'd see Lagatha in a scene, I'd give her a hug and I'd give these long beats where I'd look at her and for somehow it, it built us without me, us having to say anything, we built this relationship through the scenes. So by the time my dad was like, you're up, I think, um, I think that's it for Torvi now. The show were like, no, do you not see? Like, Lagatha and Torvi has, have this female strong friendship. Like, they, they don't have this in the show. So, um, so they kept me in, and, um, and it was a blessing, really. <laughs> and then after the character appeared in very few episodes, then became one of the main figures of the show. How did you feel when you first heard about this character development that you're going to be one of the most integral parts of the entire show? I mean, I, I don't think I ever sort of thought I was integral till the leads started dying off. And I was like, I'm the, I'm the only one that's been here from the start. So I guess I've got to try and carry you know, carry this somehow, you know, in a way. I mean, even though all Ragnar's sons came in and were the leads and they were incredible actors, but I definitely felt like a bit of pressure being one of the, like, oldest ones. Um, and when Torby starts doing, you know, when she kills Erlander, the next scene, she's in her shield made an outfit with the black eyes. And obviously I felt like it was so cool. Like I was like, I look so badass. I was so excited to get like a sword and an ax, but I wasn't prepared for that then. Um, when I look back, I just wish I'd had a bit more sort of practice. Catherine Winnick, who plays Lagatha, just had, has this already such strong presence and she does martial arts and she was like born to be Lagatha, whereas I just was not prepared. I literally went from one scene in the day to the next scene, me in like battle clothes. So it took me a few seasons to really get like my, you know, to really warm into the role and really like realize Torvi is strong and I kind of grew with Torvi. Because to be fair, Torvi had never held a weapon. So she would have been completely bewildered at this like massive arrow, bow and arrow. So I guess I just felt the same as her. I felt bewildered and as the seasons went on, I felt like I really kind of stepped into that role, that important role and kind of felt like I worked very hard to, to kind of be one of the, you know, leads on the show. Um, I think I kind of really hustled to, to prove that I was there, um, not just because of my dad. When you film so many episodes of a, a show, I think it's 64, if I remember correctly, um, what's the coolest thing you ever did in front of a camera? Probably, I would have to say probably the, the battle scenes were always just so incredible to be part of. Um, I just, the way they would cut it together, and you'd watch it back and just look so like fierce and strong. And that was always um, probably my favorite moments because in real life, I'm just a complete wuss. Like I am not, I mean, I go to the gym, I work out, so I'm kind of strong-ish, but I wouldn't be hitting people with axes. I wouldn't know how, where to start, but for some reason, just being able to like live vicariously through Torvi and like that suit, like kind of superwoman strength. Um, was always pretty epic, yeah. And let's go for the complete opposite. When you read through the scripts, were, was there ever a moment where you said, oh, fuck, I don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm sure there were probably lots of times. I think um, 
I think the thing is with, the, with writing in the show, um, my dad obviously wrote the show, and because they were Vikings, you know, it can't be such casual lingo. It can't be like, hey, how are you doing? What are you up to? Had to be quite like formal, stylized um, writing. Um, so to say the words sometimes would be quite awkward. Like certain sentences, I just, they wouldn't make sense to me. It was all kind of, it was like old, old school like language that sometimes for me just wouldn't, just doesn't come naturally. So yeah, there were some times I would get the script and I would just ring my dad and just be like, I am not saying that. Like Torvi would say really like meaningful things like us women, you know, always. Sometimes I'd just be like, dad, like I can't, I'm just not gonna say that. I just can't <laughs> say it. Um, and just any scenes like outside, any kind of really like tough, you know, if the weather, was really bad. Any scenes where you had to kind of be up a mountain or something, sometimes you'd read the script and just be like, do I have to go? But obviously it was work and we did have to go. But yeah, there were some times where I kind of dreaded it. How do you prefer to communicate on the screen via words or with body language? I think a bit of both. I think body language can be super strong. And, you know, something I learned um, you know how I was just saying with Lagatha, we built this rapport kind of through looks. I remember learning that from Erlander, who played my first husband, and he just had this tiny miniature role. And he started building in, you know, when the camera was on him and he was in the background, he would give these kind of really evil looks and the camera would always pick them up. So before he knew it, he'd become a villain. And it was never in the script. He was never meant to stay in the show. But they, the, the producers and the directors that were cutting everything together were like, this guy in the background, like he's, he's like evil, he's got something, like we need to keep this in. So, um, so yeah, the, he then created himself this amazing role. Um, and I think, you know, you don't just have to use words to, to create these, these characters. You can, if you, you know, if you can, you can create it with your body language and eye contact and yeah. With, with Vikings being a very tough show, as you said, um, of course you have to do many physical actions. Did you ever hurt yourself on set or did you have any accidents? Luckily, I didn't ever get injured myself. Um, I can't say I didn't injure a few stunt men <laughs> along the way. Um, nothing too bad, like a couple of cuts on the hands and stuff. Like on a cold day, if you swipe your sword and hit someone in the hand instead of the shield, that hurts a lot. Um, but it was nothing ever, you know, majorly. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, I did a lot of training to kind of try and prevent that from happening. A lot of the guys would pretty much pick up these routines in no time. I took a bit longer. I was like a perfectionist um, because I didn't want to like go in and hurt someone or be, you know, unprepared. So yeah, for me, I was like, would see the stunt coordinator like eight times before a battle. And he'd be like, literally, the guys have been in twice. You don't need to come in five days a week. And I was like, but I, I do. I, I am and I do. Um, and hopefully it kind of, um, I, it just meant that I learned a bit more about the skill. And so I wasn't just flapping my sword around and, and making mistakes. I wanted it to look realistic and real. And, and you had to learn everything from the ground up. You didn't have any prior experience in any sort of martial arts, sword fighting. You, you looked like a sword fighter to me. <laughs> well, I am now, but I wasn't then. Um, no, I had absolutely no experience. I just, um, when you're on the show and you're a shield maiden, they would get you a personal trainer. So I would see a trainer like four times a week or something. And so I was in good shape, very good shape. Um, so I was quite strong, but I had, I mean, when you, someone gives you a sword and a shield, it's like, what? It feels so unnatural. Um, whereas now if someone gave one to me, I'd, you know, I'd be able to do some damage, but it took me a couple of years to, to really learn the skill. One last time. I'm going to ask the audience whether there is someone who wants to ask the very final question of this panel. There's only going to be one more question, and, uh, one more question, and it could come from you. Yes, oh, perfect. Yes. A round of applause. My question is additional to that one with the most exciting one. What was the most difficult scene to shoot? Hmm. Um, the most exciting, um, 
In a really weird way, uh, when Lagatha dies, spoiler alert, but I hope you've all watched it by now if you're here. Um, when Lagatha dies, my character's obviously de really devastated, and I, we became such good friends, me and Catherine, that I also was truly devastated in real life. I wept when I found out she was leaving. Um, so every scene I had where I was very emotional, it was completely authentic and genuine. And in a way, that was like my best work. And because I really felt genuinely upset, I enjoyed, I enjoyed those scenes because I really could connect. You know, Torvi and Lagatha, it was like Georgia and Catherine. We actually both had these incredibly fierce, I mean, our relationship in real life is so much more magical even than Lagatha's and Torvi's because we love each other. Um, but in a way, that was kind of double-edged sword, my favorite and my hardest at the same time. Um, yeah, that's for the question. And I think it was a double question, the most difficult. Yeah, that, so it was a double-edged sword. It was kind of both. It was my best work, but it was my saddest time on the show. Great, so thanks a lot. Oh, one more, go on. Oh, we have one more. Go yes, on. of course, please. Hello, Georgia. Hi. Hi, so my question is, do you have a favorite moment uh, about the set from Vikings? So what is it or what was it? My favorite moment on the set of Vikings. Um, I think for me, when Ragnar dies, um, all his brothers came onto set and I was always the youngest person on set before then. So I never really hung out with any of the cast. And then all of a sudden, all of Ragnar's sons roll in and I was like, hello boys. Um, and they were all my age. So suddenly I got this whole new cast of all these young guys. We could go to the pub and enjoy Ireland together. And they're still my dear friends to this day. And I think for me, just it made going onto set every day so fun because I, I have actual genuine friends. And, um, and we just had such a blast together. Like some of my best memories of my life were on that set. Um, so yeah, the, my best moments would just have been, sounds bad, but when Ragnar dies, but not because Ragnar was dying, but from that point on is probably when my, my, my you know, experience on set was the best. Okay, thank you. Thank you, my love. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Georgia, for being with us today. We have another panel tomorrow, but ladies and gentlemen, give a huge Viking battle scream to oh, Georgia Lord. Hurst. Thank you. Thank you guys.